So we're gonna go ahead and get started. I don't have any structured agenda uh, for today's because there is so much that is happening in the world right now. So I wanna talk about quite a few things with the main subject being about how you as an agent can make sure that you are positioned to weather the storm that we're currently in, as as well as not just weather the storm, but come in, come out of it in a better position than what you went into it. So I was reading an article in Inman News a few days ago, and it really, some things stood out to me that really, you know, they say history repeats itself. And I think a lot of people take that literal in the sense of exactly how things happen are going to happen the exact same way. I think the reality of that is that not everything happens the way that it was going to. For example, God forbid, I hope it doesn't happen any anymore in the future, but 9-11, for example, it's not the event that I believe is what historians are talking about. History repeats itself. It's a lot of times the result. So as a result of 9-11, as a result of the economic crash in 2008, we experience as an economy, as a nation, a world that we didn't previously know. So, and I don't know, some of you may have remembered how things were before and after that occurred. And the reality is once that tragedy or once that event happened, um, the way we came out of it was different from how we did business before. Business was not done as usual. And I think one of the biggest issues that real estate agents are facing now is that they're kind of holding their breath and hoping for a gasp of oxygen and saying, well, I'll just hold on as tight as I can to the way things used to be. And hopefully things will come back around because Donald Trump said that April 15th, he's going to open businesses back up. Well, this epidemic is it's fluid. So we don't really know if April 15th is a, is a good date. And in fact, it's not because he's already extended it to the end of April. So if you're still holding your breath, hoping for a way to do real estate the way that you used to, then you're putting yourself in a bad predicament. Not when 9-11 happened, or I'm sorry, prior to it happening, you could go to the airport, probably about, you could check in an hour, 30 minutes before your flight left. Try that nowadays and see how that goes, especially in a large airport. No one knew what TSA was. We all know TSA very well, just like we know it's, it's anonymous as FBI or CIA or IRS. And that is because things that happened created a new world for us. And so we have to really be able to get a grasp on how to do business in this new world. Another example is what we're doing right now. We typically use, usually sit um, around the table that I'm sitting right now and giving you this presentation. Right now I'm looking at Heather across the table. Hey Heather. <laughs> and she's got her camera activated, that's funny. Um, but you guys are at home, why? Because you have been um, strongly advised to keep your distance so that you can hopefully prevent the spread of, um, of this illness. Hey Vanessa. Hey, yeah, we can hear you, we can see you too. <laughs> when you talk you get the main part of the screen so um, <laughs> um cool hat love the hat anyways um so the reason that i bring all those things up is because i want you guys to really focus on what it is that you are doing in your business and how you expect to come out of um this event this real event and uh, be able to um, advance what you do, uh, what your business is. And like I said, the example that I'm giving right now is we're doing uh, a Zoom meeting. We're, we're having a, a, a conference call video, whatever you want to call it, video conference call. Um, I've had this technology for a while. In fact, a lot of you know I actually got it before I deployed last time, and I think we used it once. Um, I hated it. I did not like the fact that it it separated people, but now I'm more and more trying to learn what are the different options that I have with the technology and how can I use it for my business. And I'm going to jump back into that article and some notes that I got out of that article. But one thing that I really want to talk to all of you about, and I really want you guys to think long and hard on is video marketing. You know, we've talked about it. Um, I've pretty much tried to beat it in your heads about you guys need to do some videos. What I need you to understand is that the way that you used to market listings, especially, those opportunities are no longer available. You cannot, you aren't gonna just conveniently bump into someone in the grocery store. Because if you bump into someone in the grocery store, you're probably gonna freak out and hope they don't have COVID-19. 
you're going to keep your six foot diff, uh, distance, right? Hurry up and get your stuff and get out. So those opportunities that you used to have, you don't have anymore. And so things that I used to suggest that you should do to be able to grow your business, be able to grow your sphere of influence, those aren't suggestions anymore. Those are things that you have to do or you're going to be out of business fairly soon. So following up with past clients, making sure that you leave that lasting impression on your clients so that they continue to recommend you and they continue to do business with you. Not being afraid to record some video. Now here's the thing, a lot of you are hesitant to do video because you don't wanna be in front of a video camera. You don't wanna hear your voice, you don't wanna see your face. You know, you're still camera shy, so to speak. The reality is people aren't buying real estate agents, they're buying houses. So you don't have to be in front of the video to really become relevant so the reason I'm making it such a thing right now is because I see a grand opportunity for us as a company to really be able to stand out amongst the competition when it comes to video marketing. And the reality is what will happen is we'll start to dominate uh, YouTube and Vimeo and all the other platforms that host videos because we have the most content. Um, and by doing that, um, we'll be able to direct traffic back to uh, where we want them to go. So definitely encourage you guys to do that. I've started to implement um, some videos. I'm actually gonna publish one. Um, I uploaded it yesterday, but I'm gonna publish it and I'm gonna go one step further and actually send it to an audience that I already have through Constant Contact. So that hopefully, and the goal is to be able to gain more subscribership and be able to gain more, uh, more fans that want to hear the content. And one thing about it is I don't really limit myself to one type of video. I'm suggesting to you guys to maybe do listing videos, but you don't have to limit yourself to that. You can still, like we talk about, be a well-rounded person and be able to express uh, to the world all the other things that you're interested in. And I know a lot of you have probably experienced celebrities at home showing us what at home means for them. Well, they're not special. They're doing the same thing at home that we're doing. So figure out how you can implement what makes you unique, maybe at home or how you're trying to uh, stay safe in, um, in this situation in which we find ourselves so that you can uh, be able to live to see another day and, and be able to come out on, like I said, like on, on the back end, uh, more successful uh, than where you were. I'm actually, I'm actually vlogging this meeting right now as a video potentially to upload. So that's content right there. What's your question, uh, Heather? Is there a difference or do you think one is more beneficial than the other versus doing videos or going live? Me personally, I don't think there's a point to to go live stream. James, turn your phone off. Um, that's that's why I don't like the live stream. It, it throws my it throws my thinking off, right? When I record content, I can go back and edit things out that I don't like. One of the worst things that I do when I'm making videos is I do um about a thousand times and it takes up a lot of time that people don't want to watch. And I'll continue to talk until I run out of breath and then I'll do a, almost like I'm trying to gulp down my, my saliva glands, right? So that's not an attractive sound to hear. It's very high pitch and it's so bad. I can see it in the, you know, the, the audio lines. I can see what that's, what's coming and I can cut it out. I don't even have to listen to it anymore. So point being, I think live should be reserved for things that are worth being live for, things that a lot of people are gonna wanna know about. What we've done as a society is now everything is live. Watch me go eat dinner at this restaurant live. Watch me um, go to the playground with my kid live. I don't wanna see it live. I want you to record it and I want, if it's good enough and it makes you laugh and you think people will like it, then post it. But I don't think it's really essential to go live. The other thing that you got to keep in mind as well is when you do things live, your audience that can that are able to see that, it's a smaller window of an audience because only a, a certain amount of people are going to even notice that you're live. Uh, those that view it is probably going to be after it has been posted live and it's, it's a replay basically. And so it's the same thing if you consider as if you were to upload a video that you've had the time to really make it the best video you possibly um, you possibly could without the benefit of being able to edit anything out of it. What other questions do you guys have? I have a question. Yeah. Um, has anyone been success successful with doing the virtual showings like right now? Um, 
I have had um, two. I had two virtual tours this weekend, and I have two coming up this coming up weekend. Okay. And what does virtual tour mean in uh, from your perspective, Heather? A live virtual tour is what I'm assuming you're talking about. Yes. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I just downloaded um, an app or some people I'm able to video call straight from my phone and just do it for, I let the listing agent know that the buyer will not be there. It will be just me doing a video tour. Um, so that way they're prepared and they know, um, especially if it's seller occupied too, um, I need them to be out too in order for me to feel comfortable going in. Are these new clients or are those clients that you just got? Both. Okay. Are you having any success from it? Are you Have you written an offer from a house that you did a video tour on? No, but it's not because they weren't ready. They're just not the right houses. Okay. I don't know if you guys could hear Heather, but she said before even this, she she's done a lot of sight unseen video tours for clients and have had success be, because we've been doing video tours, you know, a long time because we have, yeah. we're in a military market. So there's people that are interested in the house and it's, it's, it behooves you to say, Hey, well, I can go and do a video walkthrough for you. It's just become more of a necessity now, more than kind of an add on option. Um, so my suggestion for you, some ways to create success out of your video tours is don't, don't walk into the house and, and, show it via video as soon as you walk into it you need to prep the house just like you would for any other client that you're like this is the one and i want to make sure it shows in its best light make sure the lights are on and the house is prepared so here is my challenge to you i think the last time i looked as an office we have roughly 20 plus um 25 or so listings if you guys are sitting at home and not doing anything and trying to figure out what do, what can i do to market my business you may want to consider going and, and creating, getting some video footage of your listings. It doesn't matter how grand or how ungrand. That's beside the point. We want a, we want a full spectrum of listings that we can promote. So that's the first step. The second step is, for those of you who have iPhones, you already have uh, iMovie on it available on it. So you can use that to actually edit your own video, and it, the process is not hard. Create the video get as far as you can with it of editing the video. It doesn't have to be Steven Spielberg quality. We just need enough footage that we can upload in on a regular basis and in mass, and we can dominate pretty much a portal that is wide open and for the taking. And, and the main one I can think of right now is, is YouTube. And we'll probably in the next few weeks revisit the video marketing class, just so you, I can give you guys some pointers on how to create uh, some award-winning video with nothing but a, a phone and um, at the most a, a light kit if you want to even go that far. So some other things that I want to discuss is the fact that what we're experiencing right now, this isn't, it's not a band-aid, it's not a bridge to normalcy. This is, to some degree, this is the new normal for us, um, not just as an industry, but as a society. Even after things calm down and after, you know, the federal government says it's safe, you can come out now. Do you think for one instance that Americans are just going to come running out of their front door and embracing and hugging each other? There's going to be months and months of hesitation, if you will, of people being, you know, a little bit standoffish because we don't know what's going to come. It's it's hard for the government or even the, the medical field and the science field to tell us what's going to happen next, what the next wave is going to be. Um, I don't know a, a lot about flu epidemics, but I do understand. And um, after looking at enough information, I do understand that they repeat themselves. They come back. So what happens is this time frame that is being projected where the wave is going to go down is only because this illness is going to go dormant. It, it's not going to spread as rapidly. And that's the whole point of why there's this stay at home order. If they can slow down how quickly it spreads, it doesn't overwhelm the medical industry and they can save more lives, which makes sense. But it doesn't mean that this flu, this this virus is going to uh, go away completely, right? It's, it's going to return and potentially it could return in a new form. 
So I think for that reason, there will be a sense of paranoia uh, from a lot of people because we've never experienced it, experienced um, an epidemic like this at this rate for the most part. I, I know I haven't um, at my age. I know some of you who are older than me have experienced um, some other illnesses that were as dramatic, but I don't think the economy was as global as it was then. So, you know, potato, potato, it was kind of hometown, um, relatively speaking. Yeah. Something to consider is this is our new normal. And so you, you, you have to get used to that to some degree. Now, are you going to be selling all your houses via video? No. Are you going to be, um, are we only going to be having zoom meetings and not meeting in the office anymore? Absolutely not. But we are going to be, and I know I can speak for everyone when I say you're going to think twice about, okay, I shook somebody's hand. Maybe I should go wash my hands where before it wasn't like a thing. It was like human interaction is really important. You know, it, I think it provides a fuel for us as a species to be able to interact with one another. And so we tend to do things that we may, um, we probably shouldn't do, uh, because they, they don't represent the best as far as, uh, preventative health, right? I think I think that's what makes this so difficult for people, right? So I think that's why it is has been so hard for people to stay at home because it is it is a net it's almost as essential as getting oxygen and food is human interaction, right? So it, it, in your mind you think, oh it's easier for me not to be around other people, but I would go crazy if I wasn't um, able to interact with people and that's probably why you know that episode of uh, the Alfred Hitchcock Hitchcock episode where there's no people. It That was probably one of the scariest episodes to me because I imagine if I woke up and there was nobody around, if this zombie apocalypse ever happened, I would go, I'd probably end up dying out of just going crazy. Sheer boredom. Right, right. What is there to do if you're the only person in the yeah. world? Or yeah, whatever. and I, I think, you know, the science, the science field knows that that is um, a difficult thing to do. Um, however, and I agree with you that human interaction is important, but I think in the short term, it is imperative that human interaction be avoided simply because along with human interaction comes the exposure um, that we're trying to, again, slow down. So, so I'd like to say real quick, um, I agree with Heather and you, Edric, and if everyone's watching the numbers and the news, Cumberland County's numbers are rapidly increasing. They expect for us to experience a peak in this virus next week is when they're expecting it to really start spreading and hitting home. So we do need to be diligent and, and really be careful. I don't know how they know that, I guess just based on numbers and the wave of where it's hit and the time frame of, of what they've experienced. But I do think starting next week, um, we all need to be really extra careful. Yeah. yeah. And the thing and, is, you can have the virus and it might not show up until next week, but you've had it for, you know. Like, I understand what you're saying because I haven't even seen my mom in two weeks, but my mom is has asthma. Mm -hmm. So she's always in the hospital, you know, if she gets a cold, she right. goes to the hospital because she can't breathe so yeah. I don't want I don't think I'm sick but I don't want to expose her just in case mm -hmm. yeah so because you don't know yeah you don't yeah, know if you're sick know. yeah and that I think that's the scariest thing about it and that's yeah. the hardest thing because you might feel a hundred percent you feel well and everything and you're like I'm not gonna not go see my mother because blah 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 but can you imagine you know I don't want to take on the risk of I infected someone one of my dear friends or loved ones and I didn't even know I was sick and then they can't recover as well as it as I would be able to because like like you said they have asthma or they have bronchitis or they have something that doesn't make it as easy for them to recover so I think it's good to be cautious I think it's not good to be paranoid and I think that's pretty much what all of you are saying in, in your in different ways but we're all saying the same thing essentially is that you have to figure out what it means for you and make sure that you do the right thing for you and those around you that you care about. The good news is this, everyone that is spending all this time at home is probably doing a lot of it in front of their computer or their phone. So that gives them time to look for real estate. And so that gets right back to my original point. If you have the content in places that other people do not, 
then you can get in front of them. Point being, make sure that you have the content that people wanna see available for them to see. And I've already expressed ways that you can do that. Now, one thing that I wanna to talk to you guys about and how you can talk to your clients and make sure that they are taking advantage without taking advantage of the market is it doesn't make sense for them to necessarily think that this is the time to go and submit lowball offers to sellers who are already dramatically being affected by this market. The better option for them is to submit an offer that's realistic, uh, that is fair, and to get a better result out of the seller. The reality is this, if I'm trying to sell my house and you give me a lowball offer, you're only gonna piss me off in a time when I'm insecure and I'm worried and I'm not gonna to wanna to deal with you. Um, so as an agent representing that buyer, it's important that you express this to your client that no, this is not a time to take advantage of the market by taking advantage of, uh, of another person because it can have a, a actual, the alternate effect. Um, and there's a way to do that. And you know we've talked about it before. You being a buyer's agent uh, or a seller's agent, you serving your client basically and serving their fiduciary does not mean encouraging them to steal something from the other side. And essentially when buyers are just out here putting in low ball offers and really have no interest yeah. in the property in the first place, they're more interested in the deal. There's nothing wrong with that essentially, but they need to represent that that's what their intent is. Um, I have not had any good experiences where a seller has accepted a low ball offer because what happens is it throws the buyer off that somebody actually accepted it and they're not prepared to purchase the house. And then they figure out a reason to get out of it in the first place. So something for you to, you to consider that the world is not ending, the sky is not falling, and you can't get a $200,000 house for $130,000 because no, because the showings have, have slowed down. Delays will inevitably happen which we, we're already experiencing that and we're gonna be doing a lot more transactional based things from a technical perspective. The last few years we've been doing it because that's the wave of the future. That's the way real estate is going and now it's becoming more of a necessity. So transaction management will be more online. Contract management will be more online. Um, you'll start to see uh, trying to figure out ways to securely transfer deposits, um, overnighting checks, um, even closings, you know, um, attorneys are trying to figure out ways to keep uh, customers from having to come to their office more and be able to transact better. Luckily, most municipalities are already have already set up electronic recording. So, you know, attorneys don't have to go and record deeds at courthouses anymore. Um, so essentially, the whole process is going to be seamless and it'll be, you'll be able to do it pretty much virtually. And you know, it's all, it's already being done that way. But I think the add on to that is that a lot of things that we as agents do physically and in person, uh, we'll, we'll do a lot more of it virtually. So become more attuned to it and become more accustomed to it so that that part of the transaction doesn't drive you crazy and you are okay with, you know, doing virtual showings and having a zoom meeting with, uh, the listing agent, if you're the buyer's agent, and being able to communicate that. Some some skills you need to brush up on is, and it's very simple, but email tone. It's very easy to throw somebody off when you're emailing them and you're doing it shorthand or you're doing you're sending an email very quickly, and that creates a tone that you may not want in a transaction. And I think what's important is that you know when the right time is to pick up the phone and have a conversation and when the right time is to send an email and so on and so forth. So make sure that you guys are, um, you get used to the fact that there's less conversations going on face to face. And so you may need to spend some more time in proofreading your emails and making sure that the information is actually being delivered um, well, so to speak. Adjust your expectations. Um, what may be normal today may not be normal tomorrow. Um, look at what happened with, you had two NBA players that tested positive for COVID-19 and not only did they cancel the whole NBA season, but they canceled professional sports as we know it indefinitely. The 2020 Olympics has been uh, postponed. So right now, yeah, we're considered essential employees. We're considered essential workers, but one thing 
changes it all. And so you need to learn how to overcome that. You said that changes tomorrow? I said that could change yeah, tomorrow. Yeah, that, that could know. change that tomorrow. Could change yeah. tomorrow. Yeah, absolutely. That could change tomorrow. So be prepared for that and be ready to, to have a, um, a plan according to that. That's why I'm saying use your mobility to the best of your ability, best, best way you can now because you don't know when it's going to be restricted further by the government. Yeah. Um, except that when is being changed tomorrow? It's not being changed. Not. It, it was, I was a just it was that you don't know what's going to happen. It, so oh, you're okay. essential personnel today, but you never know what other restrictions or changes the government's going to make to the guidelines tomorrow that we might not be considered essential anymore for some yeah. reason. And oh. then we don't have the mobility that we do right now to get our job done because we are kind of an exception to the rule. Yeah. Um, lastly on this, I just want to say that, you know, everything is, of course, breaking news because everybody wants to get as many eyeballs on what they have to say. Uh, but the reality is it is what it is. We're in the middle of um, an epidemic and we're going to overcome it. Um, but understand and accept that you don't have to have all the answers and you're not going to have all the answers and be OK with expressing that to your clients that, you know, we don't know what's going to come. But as things progress, you know, I'm keeping an eye on things. And as they progress, I'm going to keep you aware of, of what's happening so that they are, their minds are put at ease. Um, some things that you can do as a business owner, as a real estate agent, there was no way to predict what was coming until it came, right? So now that we're in the middle of it, there are some things that you can do to be proactive and be able to try to... Um, come out on the positive side and be able to set yourself up for success on the back end. And you know what? I don't care how much you prepare. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm testifying you to you right now after years and years of telling you guys, hey, you know, I hit rock bottom when, when 2008 came and I said I'll never put myself in that situation. So some things that you guys can do uh, because it's hard to prevent things that you don't know, but hopefully it's um, this learning lesson isn't as dramatic as it, as it could be, but what I would encourage you guys to do is go back and revise what your mission and what your plan was for 2020 and apply it to the new hurdle that has been presented to us um, and then work according to that. The next thing that I would advise you to do is to update your SWOT analysis, and some of you may not know what that is, but it's basically just trying to look internally and figure out how can I improve on my sales skills? What qualities do I have that are good? What are some things that I can improve on? Uh, those sorts of things and apply it to the market in which we find ourselves. And that's going to make you a better agent um, on the back end. Continue to be realistic about what your goals are. Continue to look at things from a realistic standpoint, not a, a best case scenario or if this transaction closes, but apply your business to it being a business. We, it's really, it's a hard thing to do, but you have to get out of the habit of working in real estate and selling houses for income. Selling houses create cash flow, which should create income. And if you don't get there, I want you to really think about it because this is probably one of the best times for you to really take that lesson to heart of a closing that hasn't happened is not promised income. So you can't depend on closings that are that are currently uh, being uh, transacted. And you have to be able to wean yourself off of that. It takes time and you have to be able to get accustomed to making an income based off of the results of selling houses. Was that as clear as mud? Does anyone not get that? Okay. Don't spend money you don't have yet. Don't spend money you don't have yet. That's a good one. And we're gonna do it because we're humans. We're gonna do it, but hopefully this allows you to think a little bit more. If I don't, you know, if I have this closing and it's the last closing I have for, let's say, the next three months, then what does that look like, and how can I prepare for that? And uh, and you you know what your temperament is, and you know what your household income is, but it makes things a lot easier to know in situations like this that okay, well, it's gonna be tight for the next few months, but I have these things and I prepare for these things so that I can I can weather the storm. Cash is king, so keep that cash in the bank. If there's a, a closing set aside, make sure you set enough money aside for a rainy day, for your tax liability, um, to fund in certain times. And here's the thing, guys, 
I know they're talking about the federal government is going to be doing all this. They're giving out all this money, but I ain't seen none of it yet. I don't no, know if any of you have. And, it. you know, it'll probably be, be a while before you can actually get it. So you can't depend on a handout, if you will, to go with that. Now, I will. I do want to talk about one thing. Uh, one thing that is essential for you guys to understand is that you do qualify for unemployment. You do qualify for some of these benefits, but imagine basically the whole country apply, uh, qualifies for it. So the backlog is going to be tremendous. And by the time you get relief, if you even ever get it, if you were depending on that for livelihood, uh, you're going to be in a lot of trouble. So the one thing I would say is get online, figure out how to apply for it and definitely apply for it uh, so that you can so that you can be able to receive those benefits. Point is, if you guys learn how to be successful in this market with these challenges, when things do get better, you're gonna be that much better an agent. And so that's what I'm trying to present to you, ways that you can become a better agent even when you have these obstacles in front of you.